Charlotte Hayes is Director of Cultural Programs at the Independent Women's Forum. She's got more important things to do. Hi, Charlotte. Well, I'm glad glad to talk to you this morning. And yes, Kamala Harris has more important things to do than the border, and she's not going to dirty her hands with this situation. Mm-hmm. As you know, Joe Biden made her the border czar. It's a really challenging situation. Um, but it's interesting. She's had no events about the border. She famously laughed off a question about when she was going to schedule a, a, a visit to the border. Things get worse and worse. So why doesn't Kamala go to the border? Well, the, the answer uh, I found in this uh, story from Politico uh, after she was appointed to, this, to be board as are, and it says, Harris's main fo- focus, a senior administration official told reporters earlier Wednesday, will be two-pronged working to slow the flow of irregular migrants. I don't know what irregular means. Maybe that's a new word for undocumented. By addressing the, quote, root causes, unquote, that prompt them to prompt them to leave their home countries as well as strengthening relationships with Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries. Okay, so this is really a one-pronged uh, 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 approach as Kamala sees it. She's not going to do a darn thing about the border. She's going to have some diplomatic lunches uh, with with. Uh, Latin American diplomats to see if they could sort of, you know, find a way to, for America to give them more money. Look, root causes. As you know, we've been trying to address these root causes for decades. It will take decades more. What we need to do right now is address the uh, influx of kids at the border. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, uh, a lot of them, as you know, showed up with Biden Harris, with Her- Biden t-shirts. Um, so what, what's not to like about that? So I think that they are just basically blowing at the board, blowing it at the border. And, uh, you know, she's looking forward to discussion with leaders. Hey, that's nice work if, if you can get it. But here's what's happening. Ranchers at the border, homeowners at the border, they are in danger. And just one more thing i got to say, Kamala Harris sort of never, never delivers. She's an ambition machine, but she never thinks substantively about issues. She never delivers. In the uh, Brett Kavanaugh hearing, she implied that she had a bombshell. Hey, she didn't. Uh, she could sort of uh, call Biden a racist during the debates and drop drop a sort of load on him there, but it didn't really amount to much. And I think she's basically uh, an ambition machine. She's uh, one, one, one very frail old man away from the most powerful job in the country. And what's she thinking about instead of the border? Well, she's been complaining terribly about having to live out of a suitcase at uh, the president's guest house, guest house Blair House, one of the be- most beautiful, beautiful houses in the country mm-hmm. uh, until they can refurbish the vice president's mansion so that it will be suitable for her. I think she's a showboat. Uh, I'm not really afraid of what happens if she becomes president because I don't think she's a workhorse. Yeah. And I don't think she has any intention of doing anything at the border. And to use Tucker's phrase, why would she? They're wearing Biden T-shirts. Yeah, that, well, there's that. You know, we couldn't. We didn't have seven billion dollars to finish the wall to secure our border, so that the people who are from Syria trying to sneak across the border, crickets from the media, um, can be detained and sent back to whence they came. But we've got seven hundred to eight hundred billion to put illegal people in hotels to 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 live for free. So we've got triple the amount to to house them but not enough money to secure our border perfect sense well, yeah, it's, it's just an obscene situation and as you know uh they've downplayed uh the fact that we we uh had people on the terror watch list come across the border yeah. this is a dangerous situation this imperils our nation for one thing we the citizens get to decide who gets to come to this nation and we can't accommodate all of these people, and the other thing is, the only person it's it's uh, people it's benefiting are the cartel. This is not compassion. No, it's not. And you know, they they keep showing the pictures, which are very disturbing, of the little kids being dropped, whether it's in the Rio Grande or just over the wall in general. Who's where? Where are they supposed to go? Well, I think they're going to go to a hotel that you're going to pay for. Well, and I get that, but they can't live there forever, I don't think. Oh, I uh, have. Uh, don't be too sure. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm very concerned about what's what's going on the border. I was concerned about it when Trump was president. I don't think he did enough 
to secure the border, but his hands were also tied by a Congress that, for some reason, was scared to act. So something needs to happen. When Trump, well, Trump had the border crisis, we had all of these uh, attack ads with, with uh, children, ads with children crying and crying and crying in the supposed cages. Now the cages are considered humane. I had a friend, a big liberal, and she showed up at lunch one day and said, oh, I think if you're a Christian, you have to go down to the border to help kids. Um, she stopped talking about the border now. wonder why. Huh. I don't know. Probably because her side is screwing the pooch. That could be it. <laughs> All right, so if if we look at the situation and what Kamala's done, you really don't believe anything's going to happen here? Well, no one's in charge. You've got this fellow, Mayorkas, who's Homeland Security, and he keeps he's the one who keeps saying it's a challenge and not a crisis. I mean, President Biden appointed someone, Kamala Harris, to deal with this, and uh, I think she's basically looking uh, to deal with it through catered diplomatic lunches uh, and uh, sort of sitting around at the newly refurbished vice president's house. I hope it will come up to her standards if Blair House didn't. Well, you know, Pence was a party animal. I can see why she has to, you know, do so much work there. I get that people want to make it their own. They're going to be there four years. If I was going to be somewhere four years, I'd probably paint Well, she may not be there four years, given the frailty of, of our president. Amen to that. So that's another thing that should scare us. Any deals that are brokered by Kamala Harris right now will be presidential deals if she takes over. That should be something we you think know, about. I, I keep, I, I keep thinking she's really not a work person. She's, she, I, I, I just keep thinking she's not a serious person. She was the first person to, to uh, drop out of the Democratic primary. Uh, she was, she, as I said, she didn't deliver in the in the Kavanaugh hearing. She promises but doesn't deliver. I think if she becomes president, she's not going to dirty her hands with very much. But she will cook. She loves to cook, and the new vice president. Matt, mansion which is ha- has a completely refurbished kitchen thank mm-hmm. god yeah thank goodness you for know that. karen you know Car- karen and mike just wrecked that kitchen they did they were terrible people right <laughs> okay you know and i do worry not just about the fact that she doesn't want to work but who's going to take her seriously by the way that she did rise to to the office and i'm i'm going to just say, I think she dropped out of the presidential race itself because she was promised the VP spot. I think she just said, you know what? Let's save some money. I, I'm going to be the VP anyway, so let's do this thing. They knew they were going to cheat. They knew all these things, so why bother? Can, can I offer a different idea on why she dropped out? Of course. She was the lousiest candidate in history. She has an unpleasing personality. <laughs> She's a nasty person, and she knew there was no way forward. Uh, well, she found one. She found one. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and I, I just, you know, I, we don't know quite who's who's running the country now, but I don't think it's Kamala. She sort of stands behind the vice president. I'm sorry, the president. Uh, who is the president uh, whenever he he's signing documents? Yeah, he, and that seems know. to be what she does other than living out of suitcases at Blair House and planning to address root causes of a border that is just absolutely overflowing and is a humanitarian crisis, especially for children, who, who, who tra- some of whom are trafficked. Yeah. I'm worried... Who are these parents who are sending their kids like this? You know, what's, I just, I, I revel at it because I don't understand it. I don't either. And we say, oh, these parents want a better life for their kids. Do you realize how many kids really? die on that 1,000-mile-plus trek to the U.S. in the custody of coyotes? Yeah, I mean, and how many are misused and abused along yeah. that trail? I just, I can't fathom thinking that that's a better life for my child. But then again, I don't know what they're coming from prior to them making this trek, but I got to think it can't be any worse than what they'd be experiencing along the trail. I I don't think so either. I think it couldn't be any worse. And to put your hands into the, to the, uh, but to put your child into the hands of the cartels, the drug cartels, I, I mean, it's just, it's mind-boggling, and yet we don't, we don't criticize these parents. It's verboten. Yeah, I, I do, because there's Good no way. You. I would much, much rather have my child st- die of starvation than hand them over to the drug cartel who's going to rape and abuse them until they probably die anyway. That just seems yeah, no, it's stupid. Just- it's, it's an upside down moral world, and you have this person who's sort of basically uh, a dilettante, 
Kamala Harris, who's not going to dirty her hands with trying to solve this terrible humanitarian crisis. Yeah, and it was a crisis before. There's no, there's no misunderstanding that it's been a crisis for a while, but all of a sudden the kids in cages have turned into just this luxury setup, um, even though it's much, much worse than it was before. That's the double standard you all get. Don't forget COVID. Yeah, well, there's that. Let's not forget COVID. I'm not scared of COVID, but a lot of people oh, are. Oh, no, I'm not either, but, I mean, I, I, I don't want it to come over the border. Yeah. I don't, I don't like it coming over the border you, you, any more than I like Yemeni terrorists coming over the border. Yeah. All right. Well, Sorry, alleged terrorist. Well, we, we have to throw in that word to stay legal, but it, it is what it is. Um, so if you were the vice president, Charlotte, if you were the person in charge, what would you do? Well, I would do several things. Number one, build the wall. That's obvious. Mm-hmm. And number two, I would uh, work for, for legislation that says, says that nobody who ever comes to this country illegally can be a citizen. And I would address uh, the, the, the long-term root causes, as Kamala herself promises to address. I would do more than Kamala. I would do more than have a lot of catered lunches on the issue. I really would try to address it because they really do have a bad situation, and that's why they come. But as I said, they're showing up in Biden T-shirts, What's not to like? Yeah, well, if your last name is Biden, nothing. All right. <laughs> so if people want to learn more about what you write about at the Independent Women's Forum and for other entities, where do they go? IWF.org. All right, everybody, please do that. Go to IWF.org. They work so hard to just bring common sense back to the forefront. More people should be going to their website. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Charlotte Hayes, Director of Cultural Programs. IWF.